called Oddity, which is an unusual mental therapy treatment. Another, <clears throat> another step to the creation of Scientology was Hubbard's creation of a lie detector called the E-meter. The E-meter measured electrical changes in the skin when people talked of intimate details of their past. Hubbard claimed that unhappiness sprang from mental regions or implants, and that counseling with the E-meter could cure these, as well as curing blindness, improving IQ, and improving one's appearance. Hubbard began to have many followers who believed in the power of the E-meter. As time went on, Hubbard continued to add steps stranger and more difficult than before for his followers to complete. To increase the number of followers, Scientologists would offer passerbyers buyers on the street a free personality test. They then induced the individual into joining a program which would end up costing them thousands of dollars in instruction or oddity. For 17 years, Scientology continued with few problems. But in 1971, a federal court ruled that Hubbard's medical claims were bogus and that e-meter oddity could no longer be classified as scientific treatment. Hubbard reacted to this by declaring Scientology a religion and pleading for First Amendment protection for Scientology's strange rights. After this declaration, chapels were built, franchises became missions, fees became fixed donations, and the writings of L. Ronald Hubbard became scripture. This began the Church of Scientology, which continued in full force even after the mysterious death in 1986 of its founder. Today, Scientology continues under the direction of David Mishkin, a 31-year-old high school dropout and second-generation member who began recruiting members to Scientology at the age of 12. The fact that Scientology has continued to survive for over 40 years is due to several tricky and manipulative ways. First, Scientology works on the public image. They claim to have 700 centers in over 65 countries. They have formed relations with top businesses and have joined household names such as Sony and Pepsi as main sponsors of Ted Turner's Goodwill Games in order to create a good image. Scientology has also managed to attract several celebrities, including Percy Alley, Mimi Rogers, John Travolta, Sonny Bono, and Tom Cruise. These celebrities are pampered in the celebrity centers, unlike the regular members who are treated to a less glamorous and kind Scientology. Scientologists also buy massive quantities of their own books from retail stores in order to get their titles on bestseller lists. They run full-page ads and TV commercials that claim it as a philosophy. Healthcare, drug treatment, and high finance in the stock market are other ways that Scientology is found to capture unsuspecting followers. After creating the public image, it was time to work on the followers themselves. The followers of Scientology are told that they face great danger unless they complete higher and more expensive levels of instruction. The latest price list shows that auditing sessions cost $1,500 for one hour or $12,500 for a 12 and a half hour intensive session. One of Hubbard's bulletins to his workers or ministers read, make money, make more money. Make others produce so as to make money. However you get them in or why, just do it. And do what they have. Scientology has left a trail of victims, including Harriet Baker. Harriet Baker, 73, learned the hard way about Scientology's business of selling religion. After her husband died of cancer, the Scientologist showed up at her house peddling a $1,300 auditing package to cure her grief. $15,000 later, they discovered that her house was debt-free. They arranged a $45,000 mortgage and pressured her for more oddity. The result? She was forced to sell her home. The 73-year-old widowed woman lost everything and gained more grief. This trail of victims has led Scientology to be under the scrutiny of many, including the Cult Awareness Network. The Cult Awareness Network has 23 chapters which monitor over 200 mind control cults. Cynthia Kissler, the network Chicago-based director says, Scientology is quite likely the most ruthless, the most classically terroristic, the most litigious, and most lucrative cult the country has ever seen. No cult extracts more money from its members. For 40 years, this cult of greed and power, this false religion, has been allowed to continue. 
Why? Because its former members and any creeps are too afraid to do anything. Scientology devotes a great deal of money to criminal lawyers and shady private detectives. And one of Hubbard's bulletins, and one of Hubbard's policies that still remains was that any perceived enemy is considered fair game and subject to being tricked, lied to, sued, or destroyed. Many lives have been ruined by this so-called religion. But what can be done to control or stop this problem? First and foremost, the public needs to be truthfully informed of this scam and told what Scientology really is and does. If this were done in a very thorough manner, then maybe people would be less likely to, put, to, to quickly join. A second course of action is just that, to not join. Without members, Scientology cannot continue for long. The only problem is, the current members are too afraid to drop out. Because once you leave Scientology, you are never, ever rid of it. And they can make your life more miserable than before. Another way Scientology can be stopped is through federal action. The IRS and FBI have been after the Church of Scientology for quite some time. And hopefully, with further investigation, they will be able to rid us of this cult. Finally, the government needs to take action. Questionable organizations and so-called religions should not be allowed to hide behind the First Amendment cloak. Some system of well-defined qualification needs to be developed and monitored. If this were done, surely Scientology would be revealed for what it is, a hoax. How many lives have been ruined by this false religion? It is impossible to say. Ironically enough, Hubbard himself probably foreshadowed for everyone his intentions in the 1949 speech. He made a jokingly remark in this speech that later came back to haunt him. Writing for a penny a word is ridiculous. If a man really wants to make a million dollars, the best way would be to start his own religion. Let us hope that few people comply with the thoughts of Hubbard. Albert Einstein claimed, science without religion is blind. I say, so are people without knowledge. You know, David, I'm like, it's 1941, in a small European country. The sun is up. Everything's business as usual. Or is it? As the day progresses, a man's beard is set on fire. A woman's hair is tied to the tail of a horse that drags her to her death. Her face is totally disfigured. Another woman watches her family die, one by one. First her grandmother, and then her parents, and finally her siblings, including the little baby brother in her arms. She's in shot and falls into the pit below, taking bodies of those who are already dead. Somehow she survives and keeps these horrid memories with her for the rest of her life. These aren't characters out of a Stephen King war novel, but people who were once very alive, but due to racism, millions were tortured and killed like these. Who were these barbaric murderers? They were Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. They began what is known as today as the Holocaust. Today, 51 years later, we are still horrified to learn of Hitler's concentration camps. We must never forget these horrors or history might repeat itself, as it seems to be in the habit of doing. Today, I'm going to look at the reasons for the camps, the day life inside the camps, and the horrible fate of the Jews inside the camps. The concentration camps were a product of World War II, but why did they start? After an economic crisis, the Jewish race was blamed for many economic, economic misfortunes. The Jews were thought as subhuman and having no right to live unless they were, were to work as slaves in the fields and mines. For this reason, Hitler developed concentration camps to imprison Jews and other imperfect races. The reasons for the camps did not matter to the Jews who were forced to live life in the camps. The horrors began with arrival. When imported to camps, the Jews were packed into the cars or trains. After arrival came, they were all lined up. The strongest and weakest were separated. The weakest were sent to the gas chambers to die, while the stronger, who would live, were sent to a room to undress. Then the barbers came. All hair was to be shaved off with dull razors. Then freezing showers were to be taken without a silver towel. Afterwards, the people were, were deloused in a foul-smelling blue liquid. Later, clothes were given out. These ill-fitting uniforms were made out of a rough stripe of material. Finally, numbers were tattooed on the inmates' arms. From now on, this was to be each person's identity. 
The arrival was just the beginning. Daily life was not an improvement. The prisoners slept in barracks. The barracks were met for 500 but held 2,000. Up to five slept head to foot in a bunk. The mattresses were filthy straw and a bare wooden plank. The nights were long and uncomfortable. When morning came, the inmates were woken up at four o'clock or earlier. All would be lined up in rows of five for roll call. The bodies of those who had died the night before and who were too sick to walk were dragged out. The numbers tattooed on the arms had to match the record, so everyone must show up. If one person didn't show up, roll call could take up to 24 hours. The guards taking roll call would shoot or beat the prisoners for many reasons. For instance, a line wasn't straight, the man's hat didn't fit right, or woman was wearing a kerchief. After roll call, it was off to work. The work was backbreaking and physically destructive. Some inmates were forced to work in a run. Many would die a day. After the work was over, they would have another roll call. The meals were not anything to look forward to. The food consisted of waterly, saltless soup with tainted vegetables and rotten meat, a crust of bread, and tea. This was not fit for anyone except for the very hungry. Many would eat anything to keep from starving, even grass or rats. The poor nutrition and other horrible conditions led to many medical problems. Most concentration camps had hospitals. Camp inmates who were once doctors or nurses were usually staffed there. Unfortunately, these hospitals were not meant to cure their patients. In fact, many were guinea pigs for gruesome dying doctor and scientific experiments. For instance, operations were given without anesthetic. Fluid for diseased animals were injected into bodies. Bodies were boiled, or methods of sterilization were practiced on women. Obviously, with the harsh life in the camps, the Jews did not have much of a chance to live a long life. Death was the intention for each and every person in the camp. Some died of disease and starvation. Many were victim victims of cruel beating games of deliberate murder. The backbreaking work that was beyond an inmate's strength may have been the cause of death. If none of these had killed a person, and he or she had lived longer than six weeks, then the gas chamber was chosen for them. Those chosen for the gas chambers were told that they were to take a shower. Standing there naked, they were shoved into the chambers. The door was slammed shut. It was over quickly. Later, many were murdered because of do cruel doctor and scientific experiments. According to Hess, the director of Auschwitz, 2.1 million were executed and 5,000 starved to death in his concentration camp alone. We know the reasons for the camps, the horrible day life inside the camps, and the fate of the camp inmates. These facts leave an impact in all who hear them. The memories of slaughter and death will always stay with the lucky ones who survived. They are the ones who keep the memory alive. And hopefully nothing as horrible or inhuman as this will ever happen again. Some say absence makes the heart grow fonder. But in the case of Alma and Louise, absence makes the mind wonder. True Husband by Wilmer Baffle.